but I do like that flavor. Here, that swap me. I like the orange cream. Crack yeah. into it. I prefer. You're the driving orange. home. You need to stay awake and alert. Yeah. <laughs> about two sips in, I knew I was driving. Yeah. His mouth will get the yapping pretty good. About yes! half halfway through that cup. Woo! Nah. I'm, yeah. I've evolved. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck, I'm going to regret saying that. Uh, I already yeah. do. I already yeah. do. Yeah. I regret the camera not rolling already. I, I mean, this is gold, yeah. baby. It's uh, rolling. Yeah. It's, it's recording. I was about to tell okay. you. I was about to tell We're about ready. About. All right. Episode 80. Trevor Brazil. What was my last Sorry. one? Sorry. I don't know. This it's is 80. A while. Okay, do that again. Yeah. What is it? Okay. It's 80, but. Yeah. What? There was talking over you. Oh, oh, okay. My okay. Bad. Episode 80, Trevor Bazil, Miles Baker. Nice. Dang, that was so Zero professional. That was pretty good. You Miles Baker. I thought something on social media says the Miles Baker. Like Miles. Charlemagne the God, like the, the Miles, Miles Baker. Baker. I'll let it slide this time. Okay. <laughs> Just I since I'm new here. I'm not letting it yeah. slide. Yeah. 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 He's, he's, he's coming off this big... He's coming World off a win. win. You well, better, that, hey, and so do it right. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> that, that's what's so good. Tell them about your first day. Of hey, wait a minute. Wait, wait. We got to start hey, the show. We got to Oh, yeah. Just start yeah. You yeah. can't just roll in here and take over our show. We can't. We can't. We didn't evolve that. That's all I think this is. I thought it was organic. It be evolved. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, Jesus Christ. Can somebody define organic for me? What what just happened? Oh, what just happened? Man. We, this, this used to be a professional freaking show. Yeah. We used to have doors shut, people just sitting down and shutting Quiet. the hell up. And we got a dog running around. Yeah, we got a freaking dog, a bunch of drunks in the background. There's, there's never a I dog mean, in this house. I could be wrong, but... I'm sorry, guys. This isn't our normal. Yeah, we no. Usually, we're much better we, at this. Know, we, have, we haven't involved in this. Your crew should evolve. <laughs> we had the view on earlier today. Yeah. There's some Democrats here, okay? Yeah. Sorry. Right. We'll get them out of the way. God dang. That's, that's, oh, take, take your time. Yeah, that sounds yeah, like some time. We only have two of the most famous ropers in the world right here. Just mm. take your time. Yeah. Clock, clock's ticking. They want to watch. They want to watch your yeah. over eight. Oh! <laughs> that's good uh, yeah that was fantastic that would have been really good if we were actually going to use it on the show <laughs> I think you got to use that you can probably hear it I feel like it's on no. the show yeah red lights on so that was too organic okay go for it right? yeah. you like that okay. huh? come on guys come on <clears throat> are you growing the sugar cane or what are we doing back there do you have any limes back there no okay yeah, what, I didn't want any miles did. <laughs> yeah, but what is it about? Yeah, but I'm glad you brought that up because you're going. This guy here will not drink a Bacardi and Diet Coke without a lime in it anywhere you go. But he doesn't but, have it at home. But he doesn't have it at home. Like, will not. Like, hey, yeah. can you put a lime in this? Like, it's like kryptonite to him until they put the lime in, and you don't carry limes at home. Look, he's just realizing it. Dang. Man, you That's are a great right. point. That's a good point. <laughs> So are you going to be able to do it away that. from home now, or are you going to get them at home? He's no, like, they got to have because you. Well, this is free, and it cost me fourteen bucks at a restaurant. So for fourteen so bucks, I want one. Yeah, yeah. I got a nice shirt on. I want one. He yeah. wants to yeah. garnish it at the golf course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, we need to still start the show. <laughs> <laughs> I feel Let's like do. it started already. Yeah. Yeah. No, you no, you got to go official. Can we do the start somewhere thing. in the middle? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we're pretty close to okay. it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, do the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, as always, we got Gunny Matt. No, no, no. no, no, no. Oh, no. no, no. Another episode no. of the show. Yeah, well, yeah. Welcome to another episode yeah, of the show. Yeah, welcome to another episode of the show. <laughs> as always, <laughs> we got Gunny Matheson, Joe Schmidt, and today we are, we are graced with two of the greatest ropers in the industry, Miles Baker. And uh, mm. uh, Travis, 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 Travis his loper, Travis DeBue, his loper. Yeah, yeah, Travis is loper. Yeah. If, yeah. if we're on the show now, we'll call him Travis DeBue. They yeah. picked Travis some buddies, DeBille. roping buddies of his, picked up a guy hitchhiking on the side of the road, and they're asking him what he knew about rodeo and stuff. And he said, "Oh, I know that one guy. Um, 
Travis, Travis DeBeal. <laughs> so, he knew his stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hell yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Travis DeBeal. Yeah, that's that's right. He awesome. got the syllables right. He I just mean, wanted. He just wanted to throw my name mishap out because he had one at the World Show this week. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm Mike Barker. My yes. <laughs> nice. Mike Barker. It started. Tell, but tell them how rough it started. I mean, because my first two horses ended up great, but my first two horses were terrible, and I wanted to crawl in a hole because I helped. The first day in the senior, I didn't have any senior horses, so I helped Joseph Harrison and Billy Jack Sabins in. And we're talking about the AQHA World Show. <clears throat> yeah, and I messed up for one of Joseph's good horses, so I was kicking myself in the ass for that. And then I start the next day off, so going to have a good day, get completely outrun on one. And I was like, all right, I'll start on my second horse. That's having obviously because of a really fast cow, not a really, really slow horse. <laughs> a really fast cow. Okay. Um, and come that. back. Mess up again, so two of my three bullets are down the drain. And you messed up the day before. Confidence is high. Yeah, I'm confidence I'm, is high. I'm not loving it, so it sucks so far. And I'm doing what a good team roper does. And even though I'm pissed and want to leave the arena, I push my cow out of the arena, and the announcer goes, "Thank you, Mike Barker." On to, <laughs> on to the next guy. And so at my lowest point, he hit me with the Mike Barker. I was like, hey, they didn't even know it was you. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's yeah. the point you want to be, yeah. Mike Parker. Yeah. 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 Well, then he hits me with the same thing after I win it. And I was just like, I t told my help, I said, that's all right. He can just call me world champ now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when he was making his victory lap, I said, go get it, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to well, catch everybody up to speed, Miles won the healing at the world show this year. The junior healing? Junior healing. Yeah, the yep. junior healing. Yep. Yeah. And Trevor was his loper. Trevor uh, was my loper. Yeah, he wanted on Pride and Joy. Get your contracts in. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead with what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. a stud. Huh? Yeah, it's oh, stud. Yeah. Stevie Ray Vaughan stud. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yep. But wait a minute. Let's go. Let's back up a minute. Oh, now. Who's, Speaking of studs. Huh? Who's picking up hitchhikers? I mean, that's... Uh, not, that, that's that, and when? Who does that scary anymore? Blake Decker. Who, and going? when are we and picking up hitchhikers? It's Everything's out of context. She wasn't even good looking. It wasn't even <laughs> shit. <laughs> It wasn't even a shoot. It wasn't even a shoot. Nah, guys, it's it 2024. We're not supposed to. Yeah. It's yeah. a sensitive right. subject yeah, on what it judge. is. You're not supposed yeah. to judge. He, she, they, them. Yeah. I mean, they're they all them. the same. They're all the same. <laughs> yeah. It's these. <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> anyway. But, I, no, I feel like I feel like we're missing part of the story no, here. He, I was getting ready in the trailer, and Tuff Cooper and Blake Deckard were with me at Huntsville Rodeo home of one of the biggest prisons in the world. So I don't Huntsville, know that this Texas. gentleman had been out long, but he had The signs by. on the highway specifically hey. say <laughs> not to pick up hitchhikers. Yeah. 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 No, we didn't. So we were in the parking lot of the ar arena, the rodeo grounds there, and he was talking to Tough, and they were kind of pumping him up, and he was talking about, what do you know about Trevor, or no, rodeo, and like, who's your favorite cowboy? And he said, Tavis DeBeal. <laughs> and so that's that's... I haven't lived that one down yet. Uh, but you didn't pick him up. You mm, didn't, he no. didn't ride with you. No, anymore. we fist bumped and he went on his way. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, and you guys just came off of also the uh, Roping Fraternity there in Fort Worth, yep. which was uh, you were a world champion, Trevor. Yeah, I know he's going to get a chance to play. Oh, his yeah. Now. yeah. That's oh, why yeah. I plugged Iris. Oh, yeah. wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Excuse me. While he teed it up, how was that horse bred? Would you mind telling us about <laughs> yeah. it? I yeah. don't know what the sire was. Uh, <laughs> it all gets muddy. Yeah. Yeah. Tinseltown yeah. special yeah. evening. Yeah, yeah. 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 Gunner Tom, song. just because he was an amazing well, let's... Wisconsin high school rodeo cowboy, he knew <laughs> what we were going to need in yeah. the heading and the healing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And sold you the right one. That's huh? right. That's yeah. right. He, yeah. uh, we've, we've obviously bought several, and it has been great. But to... They won, I won the fraternity on a four-year-old Gunner Special Night, and Joseph Harrison won the fraternity on a four-year-old Gunner Special Night. And in the rope horse fraternities, they can be six and under. And so for them to win both categories is pretty rare. And for them to win both categories in the same year by the same stud, it was... Uh, You're it welcome. Was Has that ever been done before? <laughs> no, I would say no. Yeah, like, right. The I'm, odds can't happen. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I think I'm, your welcome is in order. Yeah, yeah. Chris, yeah. yeah. yeah he, well, didn't, he didn't hear me say welcome. that. Yeah. You're welcome. I'm welcome. <laughs> I told him. I texted him. I said, you know what? You keep riding them special nights, you're going to be famous. Yeah. <laughs> but then we had that 
the one that uh, that horse was out of, Gunny sold us another one of those. So yeah. Just in yeah. time, we snuck over there before yeah. we won Which, anything on it. That, <laughs> that mare. You kicked me when I was down, <laughs> and I was happy when you left yeah, for you some did. reason. Yeah, you did. I'm like, yep, yeah, good. The mare's by Major Vaquero, which I think you told us one yep. time you oh, had that horse, too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. How how awesome is it right now though as far as like man the roping fraternities and all that stuff paying paying so good. I mean, everything is just exploding right now across the western horse sport, but the roping is just awesome, which has been great for all of us. Yeah. No, it's, it's paying good enough that I was up there loping for him at the world show. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. 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 Did, hey, what is our costume? Mm -hmm. I don't look. Uh, I just I don't mean, get in the weeds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> talk about details. Yeah. It uh, it was nerve wracking for a boy from Oklahoma a little bit having him warming my horses up and sitting there watching me show when everybody that's ever swung a rope knows that there's no one that's ever done it close to as good as him. And so yeah. it was pretty cool for me to get to do it and then to execute and get and get the title too. That was that was it was it was pretty fun for me. I would. If he would have told the 15 year old me that I would have ever even got to lope his horse as much less have him loping my horse or loping his horse that I was riding, it was yeah, it was that, pretty cool. That's pretty I signed, surreal. I signed yeah. the 12 year old him's forehead when he was younger. Not my <laughs> forehead. Rodeo. <laughs> Not my forehead. I, I do have forehead. I do have pictures of him when I was a little kid getting his autograph. He did not sign my forehead. Bit, I was just a little bit older. You but, can but sign I, people's foreheads, though. Yeah, okay. yeah no, yeah. no. I, I like it. You got a lot of, of canvas estate. right there, Gunny. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Can we do some artwork? Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. get it tatted. I, I feel yeah. like I would, we would need to like collect a few. I'll, I'll get it tatted. Okay. I yeah. feel yeah. like you could write the secrets to your success. Yeah, yeah. Do it. I'll get it tatted. Need spray paint, but. I I had something come up that I couldn't show in the prelims, and so Miles showed our horses, which I knew what the result was going to be, but, I mean, I was just so pumped that the rest of the world knew what he was capable of because, I mean, I see him doing this stuff every day from before daylight. I start to say daylight to dark, but it's way before daylight, and uh, it's just... It's just good to watch it, you know, happen because I, the rest of the roping and showing world, you know, give him the respect that I already had for him, you know, and I knew it just needed the stage to do it in and he did it. Well, it's fun for me too, because cool. when you guys come up to look at horses, Miles is always the one that gets on them and lopes them around. And I can just, I can tell by watching him how much feel he's got for one. And he knows what you guys need and knows what you guys want and. He asked you, but I know he he knows. Yeah, you know. I mean, I mean he'll he'll evolve to where he can just watch them <laughs> like me. But for now, we need him to get on them, feel them. Uh, <laughs> okay, because it's still early too. Yeah. We have a lot of yeah. time yeah. to yeah. say. Uh, have we had <laughs> for clarity? I used the word evolve earlier, and maybe I shouldn't have done that because I'm paying for it. Uh, yeah, but, but I mean, we're evolving organically. Yeah, yeah we're right. evolving yeah. organically. There you go. There you go. <laughs> While we're, we're drinking ranch we're drilling, fuel. Yeah. Ranch fuel. <laughs> yeah. Right, ranch fuel. That's number That's right. two. Drinking ranch fuel. I think we've hit all the words too. now. <laughs> we've uh, reached our word quota. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, no, it's good. We, yeah, but I, I, I mean, go back to your point. Sometimes I think it's more special sometimes to help and watch somebody else's success. Somebody that you have a vested interest in, but somebody you care about too. Like, yeah. I mean, it's fun for Tom to watch me be successful. It's fun for all of us to watch Cade be successful. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's rewarding in a different kind of way because really you have no control over it. You just go, eh, I got to go. See you. Handle it. Well, yeah. as a program, Relentless Ramuda, which is what we ride under, has evolved, if you will, <laughs> to where, like, we used to own all of our horses. And so now we've sold some and we have – you know, a few customers that have bought horses from us and we kept them in training. And for a while, you know, they would say, Hey, are you going to show this horse? Or, you know, and I, I hated that because I knew the way we had always done business, me and him, like we, we rode the ones that we thought, you know, played into our strengths or whatever it was that we'd like, you know, you need to show this one. I'll show this one, you know, for whatever 
because we we both have you know we're a lot alike in certain ways the way we show, but uh, but you we, have different tastes yeah. in what you're feeling. Yeah, and so like it take like for me he's like family. You know, I mean like literally like family, and like I love I've seen it like evolve. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just That's full to great. see it come to fruition because now yeah. not only can he great. make some of the best horses in the world, you know, he's as good as anybody at showing them. And I, yeah. I've known it, but it's just nice to see it happen on a stage where everybody else does. Well, and it takes, I mean, it takes trips in the pen too. It takes mm. the mistakes in order to have the success. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because, I mean... <clears throat> Like Chris Dawson said last week, he used to overdo it because he wanted it so bad he just couldn't get it right. It took a certain period of growing up and just going through it till he yeah. did crack through and and have his success, you know, because he just won the snaffle bit. Yeah. And his wife's won it like 12 times, and she's been <laughs> top five 16 times. Yeah. I mean, yeah he we, really needed to evolve, it sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> She helped him. Uh, we're gonna wear yeah. that one out but organically. Chris, the the stud that I won the world on actually comes pride from and Chris. Joy. Yeah, pride. Yeah. Good job there. Yeah, you know what? He told us Rare that. Turnover. Rare. Yeah. Yeah. He told us that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh, he said he, he made the finals on him at the snaffle bit. One fifth or so down there. That horse won fifty thousand at the snaffle bit for Trudy, um, and then they were gonna take him, I think, to Vegas. And anyway, they called and called Solo Select and asked about looking at him. Well, I I went and watched the Snaffle Bit finals when that horse went, and I told Trevor the next day, I said, Chris Dawson had the best rope horse there. Like, he was great on the fence work. Or I say great. He was great for what I was looking at. Like, he could close the gap and was real good on a cow, like held his position and everything. And I was like, that horse would make a rope horse fast. Well, fast forward four months, Solo called and was like, Hey, Chris Dawson has a stud. They made the snap of the finals. I was like, was it Pride and Joy? And they're like, yep. And I was like, tell him we'll take him. <laughs> and Ty's like, no, you need to go ride him, see what he feels like. So we run over there, and I rode him for as long as I ever ride him when I come over here. I was only maybe two minutes. And anyway, we bought him, and uh, I think – I was watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. About two minutes. Um, so now I think that horse has been – I figured it the other day. I think in 16 months – We've won like 280, 270 or 280,000 on him in the roping. Wow. And so he's wow. just, he's been amazing. But that that's says cool. a lot about the rope horse industry. Oh, yeah. you, asked, <clears throat> you said that earlier, and I'm sure I took us on some goat trail after that. But it really has uh, just, I can't, I don't, I, I mean, I know there's other things that are bigger than that, but I don't think there's anything that's grown incrementally as much as the rope horse deal has in the last. Six years for sure. When, I, when did man. the rope? When did the showing rope horses uh, happen? When did the fraternity stuff happen? It's been going longer. I I know I didn't know yeah, that. I, I bet was it's talking been going to somebody. For Fifteen years. They said oh. the. I think the first rope horse fraternity they did in conjunction with an AQHA show was at uh, Lincoln, whatever that is, the Cornhusker or whatever, mm. whatever AQHA show that was. And I think somebody said that was in like 2012. And Jay Wadhams had started just doing a few little shows along the way. But the first year they had the finals in Fort Worth was 17. The fr and fraternity. Fraternity in Fort okay. Worth during the snaffle bit down there. Hmm. And, and is that <clears throat> is that sponsored by some of the incentive program that you guys have? Like that's, the, that's not an that incentive stuff? one. It's no, just that's, a, that's grown outside of that. Yeah. You know, some of them kind of put money into that deal mm -hmm. because it was kind of the in the beginning of everything and it was kind of the centerpiece but everything has grown so much around it and the stallion cin incentives have been huge yeah yeah that stuff come on i think the the first stallion mm -hmm. incentive for the roping was a royal crown and it was in rock springs wyoming mm -hmm. i think the first year we went was maybe 2021 or something and we went out there and there wasn't hardly any horses entered and we left and had like 22 buckles and like there just wasn't anyone there and metallic cat was in it and then one there was other people horse. there but yeah there was a ton of competitors <laughs> they just didn't win anything Stiff. but <laughs> that was the first one and it had like all this added money that we hadn't got to see yet and we were some of the only guys that had horses eligible and so that and i mean to be honest 
they didn't know that it would really pay off like that because yeah. I mean you have team ropings and stuff that say we'll add this money but like it's based on so many teams or we'll have this payoff but they base it on so many teams and it was the first in our industry to do something like that and people didn't know that that was money was built in that yeah. money was built yeah. in when those studs joined and it just took a few years for it to to catch on but man it's it's caught fire and i'm sure it's a combination of money money makes everything grow but money also attracts guys with your name and it and i think that makes everything grow when it starts to get that that kind of uh recognition i think all that stuff starts to grow and it's the rope and like how many do you, do you have an association like a rope like a, a where you have to be a member well, I mean, the American Rope Horse deal, you have to, like, attend so many, a couple of events before you can even go to the finals. But, no, there's nowhere you have to buy a membership other than to rope at Fort Worth. You have to be a member of the yeah. NRCHA. But, like, in just the team roping world, like the World Series of team roping, you got to buy a membership every year at the beginning of the year. The U.S. ropings, like, you do for that stuff. I would think the only thing that would be in the same <clears throat> level of, of number of people doing it as the roping is maybe the barrel racing, right? 100%. Yeah. yeah. We, we do horse products and everything, but the two things that swing the biggest stick are the barrel racing and the team roping just because of the sheer numbers. Right. Yeah. Like the World Series finale during the NFR in Vegas, it's insane. Like the number eight out there and the number nine and – stuff i mean it's like which <clears throat> for people that don't know like the you're ranked as a roper from a three to a nine or whatever and it they'll have like a number eight like two four two number fours can rope together so that's like a really <clears throat> amateur level of roping the kid that he hangs out and helps us saddle and everything he won the number nine last year with his partner and they split three hundred ninety thousand. yeah and so oh, like well they didn't even win it they won like third or something, yeah. but it'll it'll pay maybe four because to there's so many thousand. teams. Mm -hmm. That's what people don't realize. I mean, and, and I should know the payoff, but I don't. But I would dare say that the team roping, the World Series team roping, has more money paid out than the national finals rodeo during oh, the yeah. same time in Las Vegas. Yeah, 100%. and it's for for wow. amateurs. You know, they'll have like an open <clears throat> level roping and stuff. But like, I'll go out there and rope in the open, and the open may pay. A hundred and hundred to one hundred twenty thousand to win it, and if you stay there, and every day they'll go down the number scale, and at the end of the week, when it's time for the guys that just rope once a week, maybe and drink beer with their buddies, they're roping for half a million. And so, like, wow, I think really? that's why about our with your buddies. Yeah, I think that's why wow. we have we have such a good like built-in infrastructure in the team roping for the futurity horses because, like, they have places to go when they're done. That's know? what I've said forever because. Like the weekend cutters and all the other things. Once once they age out of the those events for all the other disciplines, they don't have this carrot for the nine to five guys that love to rope and that need horses. You know that can actually make real money. Like when you can tell somebody that's a beginner that this horse will will be perfect for you and you'll have just as much money as the best guys in the world at Las Vegas during the same time. Sometimes more money because yeah, there's more people that participate in the number nine rope than the 15. Right. 100%. The, the yeah. boy that I was talking about that won that money, we had a metallic cat, Gildon, that he was showing. He showed him when he was four, and the horse did good at the Futurities. He won like 70000 which when that horse was showing four years ago, that was doing it, you know. And they bought that horse, probably gave 100000 for him, and – in the year and a half or two years they've had it with what they want at Vegas, they've won over 200000 on that horse. Paid for. And so it's like you tell a guy that he has a chance to go do that. Paid for, and he's still so – They've what? had a good he's time. He's 10 years old. Still he's, he's an 8-year-old. Yeah. They he's still have their horse. They still have their hobby, and yeah. they, they've it, they have it paid for. Yeah. yeah. And they're having yeah. a blast now. So those <laughs> numbers, the lower number, <clears throat> the less – Newer you are. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what – and how low can you go? Uh, so they'll start people at a two, like sometimes, but okay. if you can ride a horse at all, 
You're like, well, I'm Gunny Matheson. I'm a number two roper. <laughs> We'd be higher than two you're because we're trainers, right? You're a number two. two. Yeah. Y'all, y'all are rainers, so y'all will be a, a one. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we're even worse than yeah. number twos. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's right. Yeah. yeah, but our horses head will be no down way low. that you're going to catch up to a steer yeah. in a low. Yeah. But, but their head will be down real yeah, they, low. <laughs> yeah. right. You ain't have to throw around their head. Sorry, well. I had to do that. Was, was, yeah, yeah uh, but don't forget, I mean, I had that background in Wisconsin. You right? did. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, did. They were right. going to take that into account. And I think yeah. if you were to look like at a, my statistics, I bet you I caught 40% of the time. Yeah. I bet hey, you can that's find good, right? You're probably a three. It's yeah. crazy if you think of everything that goes into, like, getting your number, though. Once you, They track everything now. Um, you used to just be at the jackpots and now they have what they call free form which is whether you're anything that posts results whether it's amateur rodeos pro rodeos junior rodeos it doesn't matter they they somehow get it all and they, they add that to your yeah. number qualifications mm-hmm. i mean speaking of that i was talking to ryan schroeder not that long ago who hasn't roped competitively in 10 plus years and they still have not lowered his number yeah. oh where I like yeah. they they know. Yeah, yeah, no, they know. Uh, yeah, you can't really cheat or anything. No, you, know, you they, can't. They figure yeah. it out pretty fast. But Alan Chapel took a <clears> bunch <throat> of years off and was just buying and selling horses in there, and he got the bug to start roping again five, six years ago. They lowered his number just, just a, little a little bit, and he went on a tear. Like, yeah. I want to say yeah. he won a couple hundred thousand yeah. at the World oh, Series. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No the chap can rope. I mean, like, yeah. It, yeah. and they know you've been around it. Like, they're not going to let you have too much money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they they don't really want you to make money. Yeah, they, they popped to... they popped his head and number up, so he went to healing. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna come down there and just see. You know, I'm gonna come down to your house and just see what my number would be. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll we'll give you a little evaluation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just mean, I don't... give him a 15, 16 year old gelding to ride. That's you know overweight. Like I've keep it, it slow. Maybe a. You know, big, bigger, slower cow to start them yeah, off. Yeah, I want a slow easy. cow. I want her to start them off easy. Kind of <laughs> a lope out there, little left lead. <laughs> yeah, jerk its head down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're not gonna let you head up in the air. Those Gunner special knots are on a whole other level over there right now. So oh yeah, yeah. No, I'd have to yeah. ride something lower <laughs> level than a Gunner special knife for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah, but you're sure. used to them. I think you'd fit right in on one. Yeah, you got Maverick. Just get your thumb yeah, out of the yeah, way. That's right. You ride Maverick. Yeah. But no, but Maverick's a heel horse, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh, I didn't know you was a header. Oh, oh I'm a yeah. header. I'm I'm header, a header slash calf I should have known that. I'm a header yeah. slash calf rover. I don't uh, remember. Oh, yeah. I'll put some respect on your name when it comes to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you better put some respect oh, yeah. on my name. Yeah. Dude, he watched The Breakfast Club, yeah. huh? Great <laughs> part about No, uh, he's just got a 16-year-old son. Oh, okay. That too. Yeah, no, that's man. I'm excited. Well, it was it was a Birdman interview from the Breakfast yeah. Club. Okay, yeah. After the fraternity, because I don't want to pull anything. Yeah, no. Yeah. You know, <laughs> pull you freaking hammy. you pull a, pull a <clears throat> hammy or a groin or something, and then you're that's gonna throw it. I guarantee yeah. you, you're gonna pull a groin or a hammy the first time they have you out yeah. there. Yeah, no, it'll yeah. it'll be good. Yeah, well, then I'd have excuse May throw for rocks not. I'd have excuse okay. for stuff. not. Okay, that's fine. We're doing it. Charlie's loading up the camera. Mm-hmm. Me and Joe oh. are going to sit there, and we're going to commentate and laugh at you the whole yeah, time. Yeah, they're hecklers. I'm coming no, down I'm, in a yeah, limo, boy. Yeah, I'll, I'll practice from, from now on. If we're, if we're going somewhere, I'll practice. I'm coming down. In, we're coming in a limo. So we're gonna, sounds we like are. a match. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. yeah. Who you got, yeah. Tom or Joe? Joe. I, Joe? Well, Joe. I was going to bet. Not even I got $1,000. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to bet on Joe. Joe Schmidt all the way. I got $1,000. Hey, $1,000 bucks, though. Right. He's Joe. got reach, too. <laughs> Joe. He could just reach out there and yeah. lay it on there. <laughs> yeah. Joe's betting on me, too. Yeah. Well, I'm going to practice. Now that Gunny's got all this comedy. Yeah. 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 I got the dummy out front of the garage. That's so good. I'm going to start practicing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well now it's on. Now Gunny's rethinking. No. Shit. No. 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 No, because I can afford the thousand dollar loss. Okay, I can afford the thousand dollar loss, but Tom cannot afford the thousand dollar loss in the shit I'm gonna give him for losing to Joe. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay? I can't lose. I can't yeah. lose. I caught two, three in a row one yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was on a I felt well, one time. Was in the zone. Forty percent. I think you can't lose. Yeah. I think you both the, could lose. It was in the zone. And I don't two. forget. Don't forget. I pay the the video mm-hmm. person, so that's we get right. a little editing in there. <laughs> Special I'm going to win. I'm yeah. going to win. I'm going to win. Yeah. All right. How many cows do you have to rope before you get hurt? 
Uh, well, yeah. after the fraternity, I don't care when I get hurt after the fraternity. He's going to yeah. put me on a slow loping yeah. horse and a slow loping cow, and bam. 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 Yeah, is that, is that what you said? Is that how it works? That's going to be an amazing bam. sound bite yeah. when it, it's not a bam, but we're going to do it. It's so a swing and a miss. It's a mark, mark that spot right there. Oh, yeah. uh, that's good. Jeez, I'm confident, bam. and I'm excited right, right now. I'm a little yeah. bit excited. I'm not going to get the competitive juices flowing. I like it. Yeah. Good. Oh yeah, yep. It's gonna mm-hmm. be good, boys. But so no, you guys have kind of developed a friendship because y'all bought some Gunner special nights from him. I'm I'm picking up on that. Y'all been successful, so y'all are. What you was know. the first horse we bought? Buckles, right? Oh yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yep. Tom basically made us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. But didn't that wasn't that around the time when it started taking off and you guys bought that horse and? It was. It was. It was. <laughs> Perfect storm, really. Yeah, we had we bought a Gelden that I think started with y'all that Cooper had, and he was by Buckles, and that he won. He was a good show horse. He won mm-hmm. like a hundred thousand and was just real gritty. It was a good horse, and then the lady that owned uh, Buckles called, and we were in the arena one day, and anyway, it sounded like a good deal, and so. She sent me Tom number, Tom's number, and we were run over here and looked at him, and just it worked out good. And then we got a few more of them, and they did good, and and they have been good in the roping. They've been good horses, and uh, probably like anything else, I think crossed up the right way, they'll be good horses for a long time. In the we roping. won second at the Futurity in the heading on one of those this year behind the Hunter Special yeah, Night. Yeah, the one so, that, I mean, they're still going good, and that one that that you referred to is in the amateur team roping world right now i mean so yep. he was able to go through all that and then passed on and go into yeah. number eight ropings number nine ropings whatever yep. but going back to what you said earlier i pretty much made everybody at basically, the table. Yeah. basically yeah basically yeah now we came I mean, because yeah. you called well we evolved <laughs> from me <laughs> yeah. when we met you yeah. Yeah. oh if they if up. they only knew that was a tom mccutcheon-esque thing yeah. to say <laughs> yeah. well, Trevor's he lifestyle eats, changed. sleeps, and drinks, yeah. and pisses yeah. excellent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tom, right. Tom's changed my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm the a, best there is. I feel, I'm the best there is, there was, or ever will be. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's funny to you guys, but there's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if yeah. y'all only knew. The pressure. Yeah. If it's y'all only knew, I mean, Monday, Trump was calling him for yeah. advice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, we all and, knew how and how'd that work out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was why I went to bed last night at yeah. 10 and didn't finish watching. I just knew what was going to happen. Yeah, Tom's team. got this handle. Tom's got yeah. it. I said, yeah. we're good, boys. We're good. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm glad I can help oh, man. The shit is getting deep over here. <laughs> <Yeah. right>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there for you. Trevor, Trevor, call me every once in a while. I'll say, hey, what's going You know, what do you think here? I'm, I don't know if I'm dropping my elbow or, you know. <laughs> Not you know what's going Not on. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, have Miles shoot me a video. Yeah. Just send yeah. it up here. Yeah. 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 I've worked out a few kinks for you. That's all mm-hmm. right. Uh, That's right. It's what I this do. Is good stuff. <laughs> this is gold. So, what is a like a beginner rope for? Something that we'd want to buy that we could go, like you're saying, to these rope hunts? Man, Half a it, million if you're interested. Who, yeah. Half we, a got, million. we got yeah. you covered. Oh, that's no, but it is. It's, it's supply and demand. I mean, the perfect horse for any any level of roper isn't isn't cheap right now because of the money that we talked about that's available. I mean, because that creates more competition for that horse. And you know, it's not like going to the Cadillac store or the Chevy store and say, "Hey, I want I want another one of those." I mean, because you know how few and far between the ones that you can trust when the chips are down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of horses that you can go go do the job on, but then all of a sudden when you call on them, are they going to be there? And that, that means at any level, you know, are they going to be too much for a number four roper, you know? And so just finding that horse for that perfect fit, <clears throat> it doesn't come cheap. I mean, you'll find accidents and stuff like that out in, out and about but oh out in toga texas you can find an accident here when you pick on a you know a very disgruntled you know upset kind of 
down on himself, Gunny Matheson. Thank, I mean, then it's thank real you. Easy. <clears throat> thank you for that, Mayor. Gunny. Yeah. Then it's real easy. But... I can tell you want a pat on the back too. You want to turn <laughs> no, around? No, I know that I did not. We're gonna do... have to make sure that she turns out before we pat you on the back, Gunny. Yeah. I know that I did not do you guys a damn favor uh, at all, but I'm just glad you didn't. Tell me that you wanted me to he buy. He acted back like from he you. was doing us a favor when he sold her to us. No, but. no, no, I did not. I didn't care one way or the other. <laughs> so let, what let's... about what about horses in training? You guys take outside horses, or you just do it all in house? It's mainly in house. We like he said, we've had some horses that will like back to the supply and demand. People have a hard enough time finding really good horses that they'll come to us and buy a, say hey we want that one yep but y'all we'll keep going with it so we've sold we sold a few geldens last year that were four-year-olds that were competitive and they'll continue to be competitive through their six-year-old year so we've kept those horses in training and we'll finish them and then when they get them at the end of their six-year-old year they're going to be finished and seasoned and those guys can go on with them you know uh, but those are people that you've done business with that you yes yeah, you're not just gonna. Nobody take, shows up. Nobody says, calls hey, you guys. And say, hey, I want is, you to train this. This is a one. difference in our program than everybody else's program that I've seen. And we were I, I feel sorry. <laughs> I feel. I feel sorry for. The secret is out, boys. Yes, I feel sorry for everybody that has to ride somebody's baby that some somebody has raised and thinks this is the best horse that, and they've never done anything. Yeah. The horse or the rider. Yeah. Or the owner, and they want you to go make it successful. The only thing that we have in our barn that we ride for the public is stuff that we've Already trained ridden. and and sold. We, we, we got we to pick go them. On. We got to, you know, do the whole process. <laughs> and so, like, it's it's age old. You know, people want what they want, not what they need. Yeah. And so, yeah. and there's only so much time. Like, don't want to piss all y'all owners off out there, but there's some things that easy yeah. you need to listen to your trainers about. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Which leads into so I, I see relentless Ramuda everywhere. You, that's that's your deal. Mm -hmm. You guys own my, that. My deal. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, that's y'all's brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Ariad even picked up something. I saw some yeah, advertising. He, he was with Ariad before. Our yeah, but I there. saw a, re, a relentless Ramuda. Um, well, my my brand is relentless. <clears throat> and that's what so I saw. Our horse stuff is relentless Ramuda. So everything that I've done is relentless. Um, and so whether it's my roping products through pro equine from the ropes to the saddles, to the pads, it's really evolved. It's really evolved. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> relentless, <laughs> relentless just did a collab with area. That's what I saw for yeah. it's drops this fall. And so going, leading up to the NFR, cool. all that stuff's going to be available. So what do you guys feel like? Forever, you've always talked about. Everybody's always talked about the guy that's that's chased the world title, chased the NFR, went down the road, you know, won a hundred thousand, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and lost fifty thousand mm. dollars going down the road. Do you think the rope horse fraternity stuff has has made it to where it's it's just as attractive for some of those guys to go that route, or is the the gold buckle still everybody's dream? I mean, there's, there's, people do really dumb stuff for a gold buckle. I mean, like, it's. Or 10 of them. Or 26. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, <clears throat> it doesn't have to make sense for one of those, which rodeo has evolved. <laughs> and it's gotten a lot better to where you don't have to, it, like, it does make sense. The rodeos are paying better. There's more opportunity out there for those guys. But I've seen you, you could put something the same weekend over something that pays 5000 and the unsanctioned event can pay 100000 Example, the American, and if it doesn't count, those guys won't be there. Like, right. it, is, it is not about that. Like, the, I don't know if it's just the tradition and – I mean, I should know because I was that guy. You know, it 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 did mean more to me because that was the best in our field. You know, all the other stuff was cool, but it, the gold buckle meant that you were the best at whatever that was that year. Yeah, and there was no Got there the was street cred. <clears throat> yeah, there was no second 
like there was no like no I was I won the, oh, it doesn't matter you know I mean like the world champs the world champ yeah but but you had a little difference For one when you were winning everything there wasn't all the other opportunities and two rumor has it you had the absolute best sponsorship deals of anybody in the rodeo business after I won the world championships after you know what I mean I had zero before you know what I mean like Everybody wants to, like, I see all, all these people saying, how do you get a sponsor? I was like, man, I really don't have a good creative way for, to tell you other than be better than everybody else. You know what I mean? They'll come to you. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the, the hard part is getting there. I mean, once you've won, then everybody wants to, you know. Jump on the bandwagon. A hundred percent. But I mean. But you paid your way there. <clears throat> yeah. The first time. Yeah. No, yeah. Nothing's, nothing's. How far free. into How far into your career were you before you started getting the the interest in being in the big sponsors? A lot later than most. I mean, I see guys that bypass college and can make the NFR. It wasn't like that for me. Like I, uh, if it wouldn't have been, if I would have had to go rodeoing professionally when I was eighteen and not go to college. They would have sent me home early because I wasn't ready, whether the fact that I wasn't mature enough or just wasn't good enough or I was doing three events when everybody was doing one. You know, it took longer to develop. His maturity has evolved. (laughs) Sorry, we're having our own conversation. And so I was – I don't even know how old I was when I won my first world championship, but I got my rookie card when I was 96 – and I remember that's old. No, <laughs> 1996. Oh. For those of you kids that didn't know anything that happened in I'm 19. I'm glad you said it. I wanted to. But... <laughs> Say, holy shit! How old I, are you now? Well, yeah, I thought Impressive. that. Boy, you look good for 63. <laughs> I thought that uh, joke was a little immature, but I'm glad you it said was, it. Not me. Some some other of us still have ways to go in our maturity, <laughs> but from 96 to 2002, when I won my first world championship. I mean, that's, that's a, I mean, which there was college in there, but uh, that's a lot longer than a lot of guys that, that come and hit the scene and are winning, you know, especially that have longevity. But I'd really think, or I like to tell myself that it was because I did three events and I had to like get all those to the finish line, you know, and so 2002 was my first world championship and that was, that was the thing that changed everything for me. I had all of a sudden I had agents calling me, wanting to represent me. Uh, I bet I had five or six call between then and when you fly to Colorado Springs and have the banquet for the World Championship stuff. And this is probably just for everybody out there that's going to win a World Championship. I would talk to the, these guys. And before I got off the phone, they were like, yeah, we just need to, you know, sign this exclusivity deal and we'll, we'll make this happen. And so I'd had a few of those greasy calls and then you finally. You wasn't right. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I just didn't feel good about it. And then I show up at the banquet and Tony Garitano, who is my agent uh, now, then, you know, ever since I won my first one. He comes up to me. He was Charmaine James, Charmaine mm-hmm. at the time. You know, she's a 10-time world champion. He had uh, represented uh, Ty Murray and a lot of bull riders and had done a lot of stuff with the PBR. And he's like, hey, Ty Murray's retiring and are retired, and I would uh, like to represent you if you want to do something. I said, I, by this time, I'm sick of it. I'm just like – let me guess. As soon as I signed an exclusivity contract, and he's like, no, nah, man. He goes, if uh, I'm not making you any money, you're not making me any money. There's no sense in us doing anything anyway. And I was like, you're my man, and we've had a handshake deal ever since. So, Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. That's Yeah, that's a great story. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and I don't know, we've talked – touched on it a little bit before and I thought it, I think it's interesting I don't I don't know how much you want to get into it but <clears throat> like when you used to go to the NFR like MGM used to take was it MGM that used to take care of you and mm-hmm. like, I was with the MGM for about 10 years and were they they were sponsors 
Mm-hmm. And then you'd go out there and you told us you you had the you had the suite and the whole yeah I it was it was great I'm with Resorts World now and it, it's great but at, at back then you know that being my first big deal uh, it was awesome <clears throat> you know from rounds at Shadow Creek to HBO seats at every fight uh, oh so you're a golfer no <laughs> that you... that was for my agent. Oh, I'm about to say <laughs> this commission. Yeah, no, before, because, you, before you getting me talked into something that they talked themselves into in the arena, no, I'm not a golfer. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, you've never witnessed poison with a putter till you have. I mean, <laughs> right, right there. He's deadly. Uh, <coughs> poison with a putter. Sorry, I interrupted again. Yeah, That's no, what I but did. I mean, and it was, I mean, to me, but it was, it was just like everything in rodeo, like MGM had been with Ty Murray. So like it was, that meant something to me, you know, like, Different brands that had been synonymous with great champions meant some, a little bit more, you know, because you'd watch that and like all of a sudden, not only are you getting that deal, but you're getting the same deal that your hero had. You know, I mean, that's yeah, that's pretty cool. That's that cool. that's that makes you feel as much that you've arrived as the money and the amenities. So, how did you two get hooked up? <clears throat> I told you about the hitchhiker well, already, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> no. He just when, jumped in the truck and you caught him down the road or what? He just opened the door and he jumped he in. Was, yeah. He was a stowaway. When he signed my head. That was, <laughs> that was in 2000. And he didn't have any sponsors. Yeah. And then the sponsors started showing yeah, up. Yeah, so. exactly. No, uh... I had... I was in college at Oklahoma State and I had a gray mare that was... She was crazy fast, but she was also a little crazy. crazy. And anyway, he somehow seen a video of her on Facebook and called me. And I was at my cousin's house, and he was like, this is Trevor Brazil. I was like, ha-ha, one of my friends messing with me. You know? Oh, very funny. <laughs> yeah. and anyway, he said, uh, "Bring the if you'll bring that mare down to my place, if I don't buy her or whatever, I'll pay for your fuel. And I was just excited to get to go down there and – so I took her down there, and I told him it's time. I was trying to circuit rodeo and stuff, and he, uh, we did a horse trade, and he told me that day. I was a little, looking back, a little bit vulnerable, but he said. A lot vulnerable. <laughs> he said, uh, I'm going to, I'll trade you this horse. I called him, he called him Charlie. He's actually one of Shadow's horses, his wife. And uh, he said, I'll trade you straight across. And he said, I'm getting the better end of the deal, but if you want to get better at roping and do what you say you want to do, trade me. This horse would be better for you. And anyway, I when I got that sucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, that horse was great for me. I the first couple times I made the circuit finals, I was on that horse and it, anyway, that was our first deal and then we had a couple other trades through college and I texted him the night he retired. Um and was just I, I grew up watching him. He was my hero, and I sent him a deal. <clears throat> would have been eight, into 18. And just was like, hey, it was cool to get to watch you and whatever. And he said, text me back, which I was surprised he texted me back. Cause he, now that I know him, I know he doesn't text anyone back. And he yeah, said, I'm come aware. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we waited like like two days after you texted us. So I was like, you text Tom back? <laughs> no. Finish your story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Man. But it was about food. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, he said come down and rope sometime, and uh, then they they had some. They had him and uh, Larry D. Guy. They had partnered on a bunch of horses throughout the years, and they had bought some colts. And he called me and wanted me to start some. I was out of college at that time, back in Oklahoma, and my family has a ranch up there, and that's that's just what I grew up doing was taking care of cattle and. I'd ride them, the horses on the ranch and rope on them some, and he started sending me some horses up there. And then it was raining up there or snowing or something, and I took the horses down to his house for a show and tell one day. And just I, at that time, I had probably seven or eight of his horses. And he, uh, when I left that day, he said, "Hey, it'd make way more sense if we just started partnering on these things." And I told him that day, I said, "I, I, I don't, I got to get paid. I don't have enough money to." not get paid every month and he said just uh we'll start partnering on a few and i'll pay you to ride the other ones until you get your feet under you and we did that and honestly this is where tom comes in i called about 
the deal happened on buckles and looking back it was t total god thing because i didn't have the money to do the buckles deal when we come over here and the next day a guy called and needed a horse for his son to ride at the bfi and the exact money that i got for selling that horse was what i needed to buy half of buckles and so we come over by buckles the very next day i had the money and then we bred i mean <clears throat> we bred 100 mares at 5,000 in that first three or four months we had him and I got a little more money and then we sold buckles and just the last that's been a three-year deal since I've known you and it's crazy how much my life's changed. I that, didn't know that. that I thought time. you guys did business oh, with God. each other. You're, make, you're making that. me sick by pumping them full of all. Yeah. Them. Basically, you just yeah. said that Tom well, changed your yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. Like, right. like in yeah. a nutshell. Yeah. For the better. Yeah. For the you weren't listening, Gunny. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, missed, you missed the whole point of that story, Gunny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He yeah, usually but, does. Yeah. Yeah, but I just see things one way with this guy. And sometimes it's that way. It drives me nuts. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, but anyway, that's that's how we got hooked up, and it's it's really evolved since yeah. then. You know? Well, what, what he doesn't say, we, we bought 12, 12 uh, that range from two to three colts, me and Larry D, uh, that weren't Halterbrook. We ran them on the trailer like cattle. and He was looking for a real cowboy to ride them, yeah. so he called me. And so uh, when you find out when you have that many at one time, we farmed them out two here, two there, three here, you know, and when it was all time to gather data, you know, I mean, there wasn't a close second to this guy. And I said, Hey, I was like, I'm sending mine here, yeah. you know, and I kept sending horses, like he said, and, uh, he kept doing a good job. And I said it when he won the AQHA world championship, you know, I mean, potential, is only potential unless you have grit and hard work to turn it into reality. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like yeah. potential is, is awesome to talk about, but unless you mix that grit and that work ethic, like nothing comes to fruition or reality, you know? And I've since then, <clears throat> I've even told him like, Hey, I don't want you to get burnt out, you know, because I mean, the arena lights come on at four thirty and, it doesn't matter whether it's summer, you know, everybody's do, you know, but in winter, nobody's does. And it doesn't change around our place. And that's. Yeah. He, I, he, I he called him. Some would I say called I got that day. dog in me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I called him one day just as a joke yeah. because it was winter and it was oh, 27 this. degrees out. And I was in front of my fireplace mm -hmm. and I just, just as a joke, Hey, you riding? Yeah. I'm on my third one. <laughs> it's like. It was so cold that day. I was so panicked though because we, I had started all of our Tom two year olds us that day. He did. <laughs> no, I didn't call you. I called. Oh yeah. yeah, he wasn't down. There. I was on the other end of the arena. I was. We, yeah, right. <laughs> I had started all our two year olds, but our deal's gotten so specialized with the futurities that I need to be roping. Like I need to be on three and four year olds, and so we sent some two year olds off for the first time, and I just got them back, and it was bad and i was gonna catch them up in one day when you called i didn't care how cold it was i was grinding on them <laughs> no i didn't I, I asked that when i first started going down there i was nervous about that like when i'd pull up the driveway i would turn my lights off and everything and then i was like hey if i turn the arena lights on at night it don't wake you up does it <laughs> I said, so, no, I'm watching everything you do down there, so don't yeah. screw up. Yeah. So, I mean, not, let take a step back further. Uh, who taught you how to rope? Who taught you to impress this guy with your horse training ability? I Self-taught or? Yeah. Yeah, yep. cool. Um, my Very dad cool. was a custom harvester and always run a few cows. And my great-grandpa, he dabbled around and had some race horses and he liked to rope and train some horses and stuff, but my dad really had nothing to do with horses until he quit. They quit harvesting when I was about 10 years old. And he, we had a feed yard and the cattle business kind of grew. And my dad always liked horses. So he started buying some like good two year olds from a guy down around Wichita Falls. And then, you know, at that point, I'm 
13, 14 and starting to get to where I can ride. And I just like horses. And we would, we would turn out 3,000 head of yearlings on wheat pasture every winter. And I always tell stories. I, I remember being 15 and my dad would kick me out on a wheat pasture and I would go, I may have to doctor eight or 10 calves by myself. And he would go check cattle and I would just go from place to place doctoring cattle on my horse and then he'd come back and pick me up later and so I just grew up doctoring cattle and was horseback and I just I think that's what struck my passion and then I always liked team rope and got to college and got around guys that roped better than I did and so I got to wanting to do that and I never left and like rodeoed but I would stay home and I'd go to 15 or 20 circuit rodeos close to the house. I always said if I can be home by two o'clock in the morning, it was in my circle. If I couldn't, I wouldn't go that far. So and did you did you rope in college? Mm-hmm. I didn't in college rodeo, but okay. I made the circuit finals probably my junior and senior year of college, um, and then uh, when I went to circuit finals probably five or six times. And the last year I went. Uh, we won the circuit finals and I got to go, it's called the NFR open now, but it's just the national circuit finals. I got to go to that. And then that next year, um, which was 2022, the futurities had gotten big enough that now, like we were talking about the money for, for a guy like me, it doesn't make sense to go rodeo. You know, I think right. if me and him do our You'd job, take a pay cut to go rodeo. <clears throat> yeah. If we do our job this year, we should win a million dollars by the time the year's over that's i think it at this point in the year we've probably won seven hundred fifty eight hundred thousand. you know and so like there's no way that i can go rodeo because i don't do that i can't there's a different kind of roping from what i do like i'm i'm roping to show my horse and those guys out there i mean they're lethal you know they they can get on about anything and do it they're doing it strictly for time yeah, hundred uh, percent. NFR yeah. stuff is strictly mm-hmm. on time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. now, and 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 you get to go home at night most yeah. of the time and see your wife. And now you're having kids, correct? Yep. yep. Twin boys coming in February. But like I think, Daisy and my wife, Daisy, we were talking about the other day. And I think we pulled out of the yard twelve times this year, like total. You know, and he used to go to a hundred rodeos a year and three yeah. events, and was gone probably two hundred and fifty days, three hundred days wow. a year. And so, it's it, you just can't that's beat a it. Big difference. And like yeah. he's got kids and he's following them around. And that's what we didn't talk about earlier about me showing at the world show. His daughter had a basketball game, and they and it's just right now, that's priority. He ain't gonna miss it, and I know that. And so, basketball game was up. I showed the horses, you know, and and someday the tables will turn, and his kids will you know, be out of school and I'll be following mine around. So I told everybody yeah. this is my hobby and the only way to really prove it is to miss the world show for a basketball game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And no, I get it. One so when Cade was playing football, we had the we had the uh finals of the Rain and Fraternity at the Congress on Saturday night. We had the bus running. I showed, we got in that thing, drove all night to go home to see a ten o'clock in the morning football game. Yeah. So I get it. I mean, we tried to make everything our kids do. So yeah, and we and we got like the guy. We're partners with the guy on the Pride to Joy, Pride and Joy Stallion, and he he texted us after he was just he had always telling we had dinner the night before, and he was talking about how he always wanted a globe, and we had a calf horse that won a bronze globe up there, and he was just pumped. And the next night when I won it, I gave him the globe, and I was like, here you got a gold one now, and he was teared up, and it was. It was cool, and he texted me that night, and he said, it's awesome how things always have a way of working out when you do the right thing. Trevor did the right thing and went to watch his kids play ball and passed it off to you, and this was the result. You know, he's like, and he sent me a picture. He had his seat belt run through his gold, <laughs> his globe in the passenger seat of his car, you know, and so yeah, that's things, pretty cool. things always work out and when you got your priorities straight. And, and I've talked to him about that, like, Right now, where I'm, at, I'm 30, and right now I'm at the point in my life where I'm, I'm gonna grind for 14 hours a day, and he's earned it. Like he's, he's not at that point. So, he takes kids to school and does his thing, and gets down there when he gets down there and rides his horses, and then he's done. And if I'm not done, I keep going. But we're just at, 
we're at two different points in our life right now and to keep a partnership good i think you got to realize that and i'm at the grinding stage and you know he's earned his right to follow his kids around you know yeah no without a doubt without a doubt there's and i'm 100 percent all right well if we have these twins we me oh yeah him. he's already telling me what futurities we're not going <laughs> yeah. to yeah. because of the kids yeah you yeah. know i mean we're that's, slowing that's, down already basically yeah that's the that's the great thing about the way we've done it in the past you know if we want to cut it 50 percent, we'll cut it 50 yeah. percent yeah. we want to do it for 18 months we'll do it for 18 months and yeah, yeah. But I mean, at this point, probably he can afford that more than you can. Yeah, I'm guessing. Right. But yeah, he's doing all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, and that's the thing, though. It's supply and demand. If if we're not making that many, they're worth more. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know how that is. I mean, yeah. but I, I've I've said it a thousand times. I don't know how many times. Like when I've, I mean, it seems like you don't make a lot more. There's a lot more costs incurred. You know. But I mean, like the great ones are. are worth always what the great ones are worth and the good ones they fluctuate but the great ones don't they're always worth them yeah yeah for sure yeah where, so where do you guys see it going i mean it's it's been on a steady rise and the rain and horse business on it's been on a steady rise i mean it seems like the the ranch riding stuff has been on a st- yeah. like there's so we much stuff a lot of that this week yeah boy i had me confused i wasn't real sure what they were doing the Western pleasure gets me tripped up because I feel like I have a lot of feel. And if you stuck me on one of those, I wouldn't know. No. <laughs> I had a buddy. I'd probably said, be right at home. <laughs> I had a, it's hard to watch. <laughs> yeah. Buddy, we were watching them all lope around out there. And he said, man, I just wonder which one of them's out there just kicking everybody's ass right now. And they're just, <laughs> you know, they're all slow loping. Yeah. I was like, I'm wondering the same thing. Yeah, there's got to be one guy on that rail just going, yep, I'm wiping the floor. With you <laughs> yeah. <guys."> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody in the stands has any idea either. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good stuff. But no, I like we talked about earlier with the how good it is for the weekend guys. You can't imagine like all I went and I took Daisy. It's been a couple months ago to Ardmore and she roped with my dad on a Sunday over there and they had like the number 7, the number 8 and the number 9. And this is just a team roping in Ardmore and every roping have 4 to 500 teams in it. And like that little, just on a Sunday afternoon roping, I mean, it's paying 30000 to win it. And I mean, Daisy and my dad win like ninth place over there and split like twelve or 13000 And And so it's just, I'm like, people can get involved in our sport so fast. Like, you don't even, there's people that just decide they want to rope. And so they start learning how to ride and rope at the same time. But that's okay because they have, beginner ropings you know and if you you they may be conscious about it but they show up to the roping and they're like oh these people are in the same boat that i'm in you know and they're just having fun so that's one good thing about our sport show me something else that you can be a number three for 10 years and be just because you don't have time to to get better and you don't have to feel guilty about it because you're still a number three you know it's not like you're going against professionals i mean like you're going against your group every week until you outgrow it and so yeah you don't have to feel guilty about not being able to get better or spend time spend the time to do it and and roping is still fun for a number three just like it would be for a number nine so that number three guy that just does it he does it for enjoying it he doesn't do it for the money that's my dad's he's a four and he has a business and he takes care of his cattle and the, we has sweet horses. <laughs> he's got amazing horses all the time. Has the best horses. I and bought them from you guys. I bet. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. You yeah. really nice Bermuda. <laughs> <laughs> but he just he, he always makes sure whoever's working for us at the time can head because he he loves to heal. Mm-hmm. And on Thursday evening, Friday evening, and Saturday and Sunday, in Snyder, Oklahoma, I can promise you he's he's team roping. And he don't even go to many ropings. He may go to four or five ropings a year, but. He always has really good horses, and he just enjoys roping. And he's yeah. not doing it to try to be a professional. He's just doing it because he just that's where he likes it's to spend to his time. That's his yeah. kind of escape, you know. And so it, I think our our sport has a lot of future in it. I think. And you yeah. asked earlier about memberships and stuff, and like how how far can it go? Um, I think we've seen like 
are the American Rope Horse Futurities, and then we see these stallion incentives, and then we see program incentives for like the mares or ranches that are breeders, and then also take all that aside, then you have like time only as far as the Riata buckle. You have a different variations of judges versus timed. I mean, like we go, yeah. there's something for everybody right now. So like, I think there's going to be a clear winner in the future of like what everybody lands on that they like the best. If it's, I'm pretty sure it's not time only because that doesn't do a lot for the animal, you know, the horse, because you can ride a donkey and put a number yeah. 10 on him and he can make it you know, reach or do whatever. But there's some variation, whether it's a fourth of the, a fourth of the score is time or a third of the score, just whatever variation that is. And some kind of central judging, you know, not necessarily association, but like a core that kind of is consistent throughout, I think is important. But those are the things I think that will weed itself out going forward because there's now used to we used to go to everything they had now there's so many that we pick and choose and so where those people start picking and chooses i think will will be where the future lie what about almost every major event that we go to it's judged good if nobody's bitching about the judging is is Uh, y'all's events judged sometimes where you go we go to a team roping it. without judges and everybody's bitching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. that's but, just the nature of the beast when you're team roping. Do you go to some events where the, in your opinion, the clear winner did not win? Or The good thing about our deal is where, like, time is two-thirds or three-quarters of the – or a quarter or whatever. Yeah. Time has a lot to do with it. it, it at the end of the day – You've got to go catch four steers, and you've complete got to complete the course. You've got to complete the course, and you got to do it pretty good. And to you know, like he won the Futurity on the Gunner Special Night down there, and he didn't have a great run in the finals, but he kicked our ass all day long. There was two hundred and something horses entered, and he won two of the rounds. And so, out of two hundred horses, he was first place in two of the three rounds. Mm-hmm placed in the third in the other round he didn't win and then he got back to the finals and really just had to complete the course right. and it wasn't his best run but he got the course completed and he won and so like it was our, badass with a vanilla face <laughs> the, <laughs> my finish could have been better is what he's referring to i think yeah but it was still good and, and like his score reflected it, but like I said, he had run off and left everybody all day, so he didn't have to. Just... He just needed to stay out of trouble. No, and I, yeah, and I think I think he's saying that separates it from like the world show and stuff like that because you have three rounds and then a short round, but it's all accumulative. So like, yeah. it's not like well, you just had one good run or you got back and had a you just kicked ass in the short round right. or something like you you bring Your body all, of work has you, to be good. You bring yeah. you bring yeah. all that. Together four times. Gotcha. Yeah, and it's so that's that's a good thing about our deal. That's what keeps no matter what this the timing or the judging system is, it's forehead makes a big difference. Yeah, you got to perform. If you if you can do it four times in a row, whether it be the roper completing the course and the horse staying true enough to do that, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's what keeps the cream rising to the top. Yeah, and that helps the judging out because you make them run four in a row. And you'll find out whose horses can take it. And then it's not hard to judge it if people's horses are falling apart, you know. Way harder to judge on a one-show one, one show deal. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's what I mean, because it happens so yeah. fast. Yeah. yeah. And so, so many horses. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say if if there's 200 horses entered, you're really probably roping against 40 or 50 of them because mm-hmm. most of them aren't going to be able to. But so y'all know as good as I do, I don't care what discipline you're in, you have 200 horses. And you draw up in the first ten, you yeah. can call home. It's and say, hard. I'm not winning this one. Yeah, yeah. you know yeah. that's not the case when it's forehead. Yeah, no. for sure. No. Yeah, and and in a one round deal, in a forehead deal, there's probably out of two hundred, there's probably forty. In a one yeah. round deal, anybody could have that run. Yeah, because if yeah. most of them have had one run good enough to 
sometime in their life good yeah. enough to be it and if that's their place yeah well, and that was born from jay wadhams i think that started the american rope horse fraternity growing up in the world show system where it was just one and done and like you can hold a lot of stuff together or prepare for this one thing and you just sure hope they don't call you in there for a rope off or something yeah. you know because you got to do it multiple right. times you know yeah have the, you do you own any part of those did you did you start any of those fraternities yourself no i didn't did, did you buy have you so i would assume you're one of the guys when they're starting those fraternities i would assume you're one of the guys that they go to and they say hey we we want to start this fraternity what do you think can you help us i've had a lot of input but i mean just like anything i've ever done there's a reason reason why my brand relentless is a licensed company and not your typical brick and mortar because like my first job was to win you know if i wasn't winning as a professional then my endorsement meant nothing and so that agent i talked to you about earlier was like hey if we structure it like a licensing company you know you don't deal with the employees the insurance and all that goes along with running a brick and mortar business and you can still have your input but not have the liability and everything that goes along with that and like if i was starting it today i would have started something probably far different but at the time i had to focus on my job and that's the kind of the way it is right now with the fraternities like i, I don't mind giving input like any other team roper in America, probably. But <laughs> but you're a horse trainer first. But now. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like I I want it to be pure, and I want I want the best uh, system or whatever that formula is to be to win in the end. You know, to have that. I I would like to see these guys start to kind of narrow as far as coming under one umbrella and something that we could you know all get behind and just make you know 10 great events a year yeah because i think you can overshow a four-year-old horse you know and do I they think, go ahead i i just think i think that there's enough opportunity now that i try to schedule it out before if if we've got we got a huge event in august now that pays you know a hundred thousand for the winter and so like if i get a couple shows in before that one I feel like I'm better off than the guy that's got in eight shows before that one because yeah. they're having to show around well, certain things and don't have a you're pure you're animal. prepping your horse for an event. Yeah, you're building to something mm -hmm. kind of like yeah. we do. Yeah. You're not just using I've, it up the whole time. Yeah, I've changed it up on our three year olds because I used to be like this time in the year I'm pushing them because we'll start in February, yeah. but my three year olds I got the gunner special night filly that is maverick's full sibling i've stayed hooked on her and i've stayed hooked on a few fillies that'll be ready to go in february but everything else i'm the gildings for sure i'm coasting because i have i had a mare i showed this year and she was i think the winningest fraternity horse of the year and i showed her all year long but i was having to work real hard to make sure that we kept winning on her and he showed up at the hundred thousand event on one that the gunner special ninety one fraternity on that hadn't been anywhere and he just went to the four or five best events of the year and didn't win. I mean, he got that horse probably won a hundred thousand. I won hundred and twenty five thousand and I took mine. I mean I I run mine. I had right. to wait, make sure I was keeping mine together and he just showed up when the money was good and so now i'm thinking, I was just pitching up picking up hitchhikers he's <laughs> along yeah but now i'm thinking like i'm gonna coast on these three-year-olds and just have them peaking at the right time now oh i remember something trevor told us last time he was here uh, i remember asking you what made you so good at your job whenever you were um rodeo and then you said you put your horses in a lot of bad spots at home. Everything you could think of, you did it at home. Made it harder at home. I did that this year, and man, it was go. it was a train wreck for a minute, dude. I remember telling myself, "No," he said, "It's what he does." Yeah. Yeah. I made that up. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Uh, no, you didn't. Uh, no, I tell people to that to this day. It's cr it's crazy, and you see it in the fraternity deal as much as anything. Because by the fourth run that we're talking about, 
like it gradually gets worse but like if you've prepared them for perfect they're not going to see it when they get away from home yeah. especially reacting to cattle you know i mean there's just so many things that can get thrown at them and so i the, do think that's important the yeah. team roping is i mean that's the deal right now right there's not there's do they have uh uh, calf rope and fraternities also tied up fraternities. We're going yeah. to one in a couple of weeks. Yeah. They're do not, they have they're breakaway not rope and fraternities oh, yeah. for people do. that don't want to get off? Yes. They have breakaway. For, they have yeah. breakaway Men's every breakaway. week, every, yes. every weekend. Can so, boys show in breakaway? Boys can, men can't. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just teasing, y'all. Just teasing. <laughs> no, he's no, he's not. Uh, well, yeah. I'm going to identify as a boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but your cl- so right now your bread and butter is the team rope, and obviously, but your bread and butter as a as a pro rodeo guy was the calf rope, right? Well, I mean, you were good I at love- all of it, but wasn't the ca- the calf rope was kind of the yes <laughs> barrel I, racing was pretty good. It, it's it's all been good, um, but I won three titles in the calf rope and only one title in the team rope, but I made the finals every year and multiple events that's my bread and butter was the all around but i love the tie down roping because what i alluded to earlier all the bitching in the team roping you didn't have anything to do with that in the tie down roping like it really was when you executed it like when you, you when you're away from home and you haven't been able to practice like when you've got you your horse your partner its horse and a cow every time there's just so many variables right. and it's just a lot of stuff going it's just nice to know in the tie down roping or the steer roping, you execute, you get paid. You know, I mean, that's it's on you. And it was for that reason. Uh, those of you that don't know a lot about tie down roping, there's two wraps in a hooey, which is like for most people. For most people, he did one wrap. Yeah, wrapping rap a hooey was for me because, like, that was the one time that I could gamble, you know, and, and nobody else's livelihood depended on it, you know, so I could be a little touch more reckless in that part of it, you know, because for most people, if their calf kicks loose, you know, they're, they're, they're tough. It ruins their day. Yeah. For me, if I put two wraps on a calf and, and he doesn't try and I win second and I was like, I could have put two on that calf. Like that ate at me more than if calf gets up, I was like, well, that's just I, I chance you take. Mm-hmm. Live by the sword, die by the sword. But like, it's just usually not like that for most people. And I attribute that to like having team roping, you know, and other events that I had to do or got to do. And, I, but I had other pe- other pressure, like team roping was a pressure like I'd never felt because I was doing three events and this guy was just right. a healer yeah. and he was roping with me or just a header and he was roping with me. And so I took less chances in the team roping than I did any event because I just knew I knew that's how they made their living. Yeah, you had a party. Mm-hmm. He did the all around. He didn't yeah. really do the barrel racing. Did he? <laughs> no. <laughs> he can't do that. Yeah. Can't do that. No. My well, wife did. Yeah. But yeah. who do you think trained the horses? <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, so with how, the team uh, roping, is it just kind of is it just kind of known that okay, I, my partner missed, happens. We just go on, or do you or go out back get a and sock the shit out of the other one? <laughs> Say you stupid! Do you go? <laughs> what you do last night? You stay up late? It's both. Yeah. You go back yeah. to your wife and say that some bitch missed again. It's both. Yeah. yeah. Well, I uh, I roped with Patrick Smith for about I don't know it was probably ten or twelve years felt like thirty. Uh, he's one of my no good, offense, Patrick. Good, good yeah. friends to this day. I mean, we do business together and other fields and he's just he's one of my best friends but it it was like that um he was one of those guys to where he wanted to break it down a lot like i was like well i really don't i'm not like that at all like to a he fault. don't break nothing down <laughs> just no. do it just go out there i just no. do it and so i just told him i said the only thing i ask is when we'll decide every december if we're going to rope in january but don't tell me we're going to rope in 2024 and then get weak on me. You know, like either have enough faith to see it through and go all four quarters because no matter what, like rodeo to me was at least four quarters. You know, you might have a good winter, 
you might not, but you need to have a good spring or summer. It didn't matter what variation, but nobody had a good everything, you know, and that's really hard as a team because you might not be the one struggling at that time, but the next two weeks you may be, right. you know what I'm saying? And I just, it never made sense to me when that somebody could be their best when they thought they're, we're on the chopping block. Their, their job was on the chopping block. And I said, if you'll give me a, a season, I'll, if, if something needs worked out, I'll get it worked out. If, if I need a different horse, there'll be a different horse. If whatever that is. But I think teams that have done that, will have more success than the guys that are just switching, jumping all sense. the time. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Like like a three point shooter. If yeah. he knows if he misses, yeah. he's gonna get jerked out of the game, no. he's it's gonna be tight. But 100%. if he knows he can he can go twenty yeah. percent and they, still when they get, shoot it and they just know people are crashing the boards yeah. and gonna do whatever it takes to put it yeah. back up. Yep. You know, it's different. That's one thing that makes it good for our deal where we were like we don't necessarily ride for the public because for the most part, we either have really good owners that understand the ups and downs, or we're back in the box. He's showing something I own half of. I'm showing something he owns half of, and he knows I bust my ass, and I know he busts his ass. And if we mess up, so be it, you know. And so there's, it's nice when there's no stress of having owners. Was there stress stuff. when you first started roping with him? Uh, to be honest, no, because like uh. His, what would Strand be to you? My uncle. So his or uncle, my uncle-in-law. <laughs> uncle-in-law said one time the what made him so good in his career was he said he was the only guy that was better at losing than he was winning, and so like it That's, didn't. That sounds like an insult. I know, <laughs> but he. I didn't take me long to be around him that realized like losing has zero effect on him. Like he's never mad after he loses. He's never has a bad attitude. It's just like we lost five minutes ago and it's like what do you like we already forgot about that keep short memory keep moving forward and so like that's good advice yeah he knows that we're trying and, and i i never have to worry about if if i like i want if he's gonna put his foot through his vet box after he turns four and a half times <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just hypothetically. I mean, hypothetically, <laughs> yeah. it's good to have plastic vet boxes to put your foot through when you're pissed off after a bad yeah. run. I, I just don't have to worry about that with him. Like I won the the event he was talking about, our big event in the in August in the summer. I was high call by by so far I could have screwed the run up ten different ways and still won, and and I knew. When I backed in the box, he was standing right here, and I know if I would have whacked him in the back of the head, it wouldn't have phased him one bit. And, you know, the half of that money was his, and, and he it just – with the partnership and the friendship, we just – there's no stress there. And that – it's nice not having to worry about that with client horses. You know, somebody up there mad because you missed on their horses. It's it's our horses. You yeah. Know? And he's seen it all. Maybe he's, he's yeah. missed, and he's, he's, he's won, and he's – I've yeah, won, yeah. and I've lost – I like winning better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I know you can't escape the other. Yeah. Well, we did bad somewhere not long ago, and his mom called, and, how'd you do? And didn't do good at all, Mom. And she said, oh, I'm sorry. He's like, well, it won't be the last time we don't do good, so it'll come back around. You know, it's like it just it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. My mom, matter. I love her. God bless her. Uh, yeah. She, uh, she wants to know. She though. rode bulls. She liked winning Somebody all around titles, had to ride and bulls. she got on. A, <laughs> no, she mom. got on a bull to win an all around buckle for him to wear to what, like the eighth grade dance or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, his his mom's a dog. I got a pair. Of, That's awesome. I've got yeah. a pair of buyers bits and spurs. Oh yeah, that my mom won the all around at, at Roaring Springs to wow. get. Yeah, those are probably priceless to you. They are. I mean, they are. But I mean, like, but she's she also. She's not like me. She's like she, she doesn't mind that I don't win, but she wants to make sure that I know that I know why I didn't, so I wouldn't do it again. So she's like, "Well, why'd you miss? Or why didn't you win?" Yeah. <laughs> and his dad's the most intense roper you've ever been around. I'm, and I mean, we, I love it because I, I like talking about it with him. But he's yeah. he's intense. Yeah. So what's the? <clears throat> I know there's a whole bunch of 
relation. Like everybody's there. You're related to a lot of somehow other I'm famous. I'm an only child, but somehow, yeah, I've got related. How, how are you? Who's who are you related to? Well, Roy Cooper was my father in law. Was. Was, but he is, always will be, yeah. He was, he was to me the guy that, like, I went and lived there. I guess I was at college at Vernon, and I went up there because I was dating his stepdaughter. And I lived there in the apartment and rope, got to rope with him. And, uh, I don't know that he did a ton for my roping other than just getting to watch him, but he was such a hype guy. Like, it's just something about like an eight time world champ believing in you and be like, somebody would stop in from rodeo on and that rope and I'd just be watching, you know, working the shoot, whatever, watching. And they, he'd leave and he's like, he can't carry your rope bag, you know, or something like that. And I'd be like, dang. I didn't, yeah. know, I didn't know that, you know, and I think he did more for my confidence than I could have ever done by winning. You know, there's just something, and That's I just want cool. I want to be that for people because, like, not to feed them full of BS. Like, right. it has to be legit, legit, but be like, hey, just so you don't have to go through all this, like, you're good enough, you know, like, you no, know, right where you're at. If you just do this, there, you're good enough. You know, and that's that's what Roy was for me. And he's in the greatest of all time conversation. Oh, hundred percent. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, his he he lived in a in a fun time. You know, where in the '80s, rodeo and being the king, it was it was probably really good. Yeah. And but it, it like, was a different time too. People didn't say that just to make you feel better. He didn't tell you that just to make you feel better. Yeah. You know, now they give you a trophy for everything. He wasn't saying it to give you a trophy. He was saying it because he knew it. Yeah. And that's, that's cool. That's what a lot of people, I mean, you guys will and a lot of people listening will realize it because they're they do a discipline, you know, but like that's why I tell everybody like that's why the team roping deal was so big to me that, like, we're roping for a year. Like, because I know what that confidence that somebody believed in me did for me. Yeah. You know, because that was – literally didn't tell me one thing about other than get your tip down or get to the front. Like, nothing groundbreaking as far as, like, technical. But he just said, boom. Yeah. Confidence You're good enough. Yeah. Let's go. I was like, well, if he says I'm good enough, let's go. You know, like, put me in, borrow money, whatever we got to do. He says I'm good enough, let's go. Yeah. You know, and that was that was what he did for me. Yeah, that's a great story. Yeah. Uh, Not to put you on the spot here either. I mean, especially with Tom sitting there, I know you don't want to indulge and you know make him feel good. But you said you've been successful and you just won a world title on a cow horse, and you guys have also been successful on reining horses. Which one and why would you prefer to have? You felt like he said he's so good at watching them from the ground that he can just pick them, you know. He just it's just natural <laughs> feel. Yeah. yeah. He's got that Roy Cooper sense about mm. the horse now. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 Magic. No, I uh, So it I doesn't matter. I pictured a cow in front of those reining horses. <laughs> it uh I hate to say it doesn't matter like the <clears throat> I really like the reiners. It's a longer process with them. I feel like I can get them really trained in six months and then the next six months it feels like i'm at a at a standstill because i can pattern them in six months but then the next six months when they actually get kind of trained and pattern them and they're patterned i've got to just throw situations at them to teach them to read a cow like how to react but i can't throw those situations at them before they're patterned because then i'm shooting a moving target all the time and so i do feel like it's taken me a little longer to get the rainers really good but when they get good, they're committed. Like it's so almost like y'all sell them in the first six months. Sell them at the six <laughs> month mark. No, but like I think the way y'all y'all bred them to do y'all's deal, when they get trained in our deal, they're just committed to just doing it over and over and over again, and they're okay with that. I I told somebody I was like, 
for for y'all, they've got to be okay with running and stopping every single day, run and stop, run and stop, or just turning, you know, and they've got to live in that bubble and be okay with it. And so when they get good for us, it's almost like – They've they got to not think too much for the rider They to don't be good for us. Yeah, they don't get tired of doing the right thing, you yeah. know. Yeah. The cow horses, I feel like I can train them faster. Like the horse that we've done really good on, the one I won the world on, he, he trained really fast, but like – He's really hooked up to the bridle reins, and I think I've talked to y'all about that. I everybody has a misconception. It was actually Mandy and I talked about it of you know Rainers getting over the bridle and not having. Mandy's any really the one that's changed our life. Yeah, <laughs> and when you get right down to it, and she said, "Be honest with you, when I worked for Tom, Mandy was the one that helped me the most too." Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, well, believe me, she's still trying to help me. Yeah. So. Well, she said at one time, she was like, if they're not, if their feet aren't hooked up to the bridle reins, they're no good for us either. Yeah. And so I've told people that, they're like, oh, the rainers there. And I'm like, no, y'all, y'all haven't rode the good rainers. You know, like I told you, I'm like, I don't, I want the good ones. I want the ones that y'all like or what I want to ride. Cause if they're good for y'all, they're good for us. And yeah. so anyway, I'm, I'm pretty indifferent on, I just like a good horse. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't really care how he's bred, but we've had a lot of success on the gunner special nights, you know, and uh, I've had look good luck with the cow horses too, but I think the, the cow horses there, when they went through that, they've went through it, you know, they're, they're hooked up and, and they've been on a cow enough and we've got a gun of trashy mare that uh, Corey Cushing rode the snaffle bit for Trudy. And it was pretty cool because having just a straight rain and bred horse that had been worked on a cow that much, trained so fast for us i mean it it was just overnight because they don't have they're not the reaction to the cows not bred into them because reacting on a cow is bad for us i don't i don't want them scared of a cow they need to be willing to like read the cow but get off in the mix and a lot of them are bred so reactive that they're trying to read the cow and they're reacting and they're not listening to you and you can't like shove them up in there and so it that's not good either but having a rainer that had quite a bit of cow work done on it was pretty cool <laughs> the the reining horses seemed like had the old school cow that once they do learn where the cow is they want to go to it right you know yeah. versus like the cutters and stuff you the know they do so have a lot now. of cow like i'm not taking anything away from them but it's almost like it's it's such a it bred get so away much from draw them. on the cutters like to teach them to draw breeding is amazing cow. because you can you can you see can that feel stuff. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it really it yeah. really is. There's some there's something to it. But. Well, for us, the the difference between the the cutting bred horses and the reining bred horses that we've developed over the years is th the reiners have a lot of weight, and the cutters try to outthink you. And we can't have that in the reining. We can't have the outthink you part. Yeah. We got to have the weight. And I would think I have no no clue, but I would guess in your deal, when it's judged, part of it is standing in the box yeah. and, and the yeah. rate and i would think that would fit pretty good with what the rainers what we've bred into the rainers too yeah, and the, yeah. in the head and it's and both it's definitely the box and uh we call it the patience what you're saying that weight in even in the heel horses that's why they can't be so reactive to the cow making a big move right there from when they're running straight to when they turn left you know that's when they they if they react too much right there that's what we say is too much cow and but also having that pos that maneuver right there has to have a lot of patience to where they're waiting you know for that to happen before because if they could drop the shoulder or break frame right there really easy yeah i could care less if they cut like in the if i'm buying like the the gun of trash you that's been good for us and then the stud that's been good for us they were good in the raining they were good down the fence their weakest event at the snaffle bit maturity was a cutting and i'm i'm fine with that i right. can teach him where to go and but in and like if if i'm trying to teach a horse how to hold his frame through the turn and hold his body right and all you this don't stuff, want him ignoring you thinking about a cow yeah if i'm putting him where i want him and then all of a sudden the cow does something funky and he throws his ears forward looked at the cow and i lose frame and stuff and it just i'm, I'm out on that but they've yeah. got to have enough cow in them to have that that magnetism to where you can frame off of that because yeah. if they don't you're just framing out here in no man's land they've got to have enough there's still a purpose to to, to yeah. lock on that helps you 
frame the horse the whole time. But if not, you can you're just you're just going in a wild pattern out there. Yeah. The spot yeah. Right. yeah. Yep. Yeah, and you can like I can tell that stuff from the beginning, like the filly I got from you. Yeah. She's real cowy. And yeah. everything out of that mare has been like she pins her ears. Yeah, the major she'll... bonanza, the bottom side had mm-hmm. a lot of cow in it. Yeah. She wants to go bite. And them. a lot of stop. Yeah. yeah. She wants to go bite them. And I like that. When <laughs> started on Maverick, he wasn't sure where the cow was. It was like a heat seeking missile. We were going somewhere. <laughs> so, like, I. It was I, like a heat seeking missile. But like, I can see that. But I spent. That's why I sold him to you. Yeah. <laughs> I spent 60 days pin roping on him just to get him to run to a cow and hold the cow and time him up and stay there. And I break weight on that filly for three or four days, and then I was like, hell, back her in the box and see what we got. And he come out there today and seen her on about the fourth day out of the box. I was like, dang, she looks good. But, like, she's so hooked up to the cow that I'm having to knock her off my left rein and say, hey, we, get back we can't in on just. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll let you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll like get we a check. can't just tell me how much I'll yeah. get a check. I'm framing her off the cow because she wants to the cow versus like, hey, we've got to go hook up, you know, and that that just speeds the process up. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Well, gentlemen, that's a cool story. We're right. We're just Did minutes. Talk too long again. No, we're we're we're, we're minutes before I have to start paying you overtime. Oh yeah. <laughs> how long so, have we been going? We're not going to have to pay taxes I was on just overtime about now. To start Hour telling drinking stories on Trevor. Yeah. No. Yeah. We'll go and we'll go back through and then you get a, so it's a hundred bucks for every time you mention Gunner Special Night and then minus a hundred bucks for every time you said Gunner Trash Us. So I think oh, we're kind of, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot to tell you guys there's some words we evolved? don't say yeah. on the yeah. show. Oh, sorry. And Gunner Trash was one of them. Oh, we don't talk it. about him. So okay. it cost us a couple yeah. of but I did yeah. say ranch fuel too. Yeah. yeah, that was three good. times. Good. Now. We go. actually <laughs> drank our ranch fuels. Yep. Yep. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you guys on, very much for, sure. for your time. We know so y'all are busy, good. and we had a good time. Not this at, is cool not for at us. Nine thirty at night. Yeah, good time. Yeah, we get on busy. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations <laughs> on your world title. Thank you. Thank you. All right, grow the show.